Well, hallelujah. Come on, right there where you are, lift up a shout of praise. And well, while we're at it, come on, lift up a shout of victory, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of Pastors Andre and Jenny, all the way from Florida and the USA, welcome once again to Faith Worship. We're going to be live with you for the next hour and a half. And you know what? This is going to be a moment in time that will change your life for all of eternity. Chantel, as we walked into this glorious facility this morning, and seeing this incredible facility known as the Great Faith Dome. You know, I was just struck by the beauty, the splendor of this place. And what resonated in my spirit in that moment is how awesome is this place, for it is none other than the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the house of God. I want to welcome every saint in this place. I want to say to you today, that's your day of breakthrough. Everyone watching from all over the world, I want to say to you that you are part of something that is big. You are part of something that is monumental because this word today, it is the word of the living God and it's going all over the globe. People are going to tune in as you are sharing this feed. This word is going to go to people who are destitute, who are hungry, who are desperate for the Lord and He is going to come and He is going to touch them. So I want to ask everyone in this place and wherever you are, that there's one thing that you can do to ensure that we make new disciples today. And it's for you to go and share this feed right now. Go to Facebook, myfaith.tv, and then you go and share this feed. You tag some people, some people who are at home right now, some people who are sick right now, because today we declare by faith that strength is coming into your body. For those of you who don't have any sickness, I praise God for that. And I want to say to you that you are stepping into your new season. So while you are in this atmosphere today, I want to encourage you to put a demand on the anointing. How do you do that? You prepare your heart already. You say that this is my day of breakthrough. I'm not leaving this place. I'm not ending this broadcast without a touch from God. Hallelujah. I thank you, living God, that you are touching your people today, that you are imparting fresh identity, that we are stepping into the fullness that you have paid a high price for in Jesus' name. We don't have to ask God for a visitation today. Why do I say that? Because when the living God is in inside of you. You choose to bring the anointing into this place. We put a demand on the anointing and today signs, wonders and miracles are taking place. Are you excited? I want you to get excited in this place. Let's get excited because it's excitement. It's an expectation that get God to move. There needs to be a hunger. There needs to be a desperacy. Thank you, Jesus, that your people are hungry for you. This world will want to take the very life out of you. But today is the day where you choose to put a demand on things that is higher, things that is in another realm, and you step up as a son and a daughter of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. Something is happening and I want to encourage you raise that level of expectation we're going to be talking about the power of words today and then also by the grace of God we're going to be dismantling and we are going to be denouncing every single unholy vow today is the day that we're going to speak life we're going to prophesy life over every single situation and even that which is dead will come back to life in the name of Jesus. Come on, I want people already to start prophesying to the north, the south, the east, and the west. That which people have said is dead, whether it is physical, whether it is a spiritual, whether it is a dream, whether it's a vision, it comes alive today in Jesus' name. So I want to ask you again, are you ready? Are you ready for the fullness of God to be made manifest? Are you ready to take up the authority and the power that God has already given to us. Are you ready? Amen. I just want to, I was just reminded by the Spirit right now. When I walked into this place this morning, the Lord showed me ripe figs. What does that mean? That means that we are full of fruit, that He's coming back and that you are going to bear fruit for every season in your life, that fruits are coming forth. I want to declare to you that every seed that you've sown in the previous season is bearing much fruit. I want to even say to you that you should prepare your heart to sow a seed into the anointing today, that this is your new season, that we step into our new season and we sacrifice a seed of sacrifice. I want to say to you, if you are desperate for a major breakthrough, 
for something that will take you into a new realm, a new place. You say to the Lord, Lord, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. Then I want to say to you, put a seed in the ground. Say to the Lord that you are my provider. You are my healer. You are my promise keeper in Jesus' name. Today will be the best day of your life. Amen. Amen. It is significant September and we prophesy that this is going to be a month indeed that will be marked by significant suddenly moments in the name of Jesus. But even today, we're going to give people an opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We're also going to be giving people an opportunity to press in, as Chantel said, to place a demand on the anointing. We believe in the Lord for your healing today. Come on. Signs, wonders, miracles will take place today. If that is your expectation, come on right there where you are get ready because we're going to praise the name of the Lord and as our praises go up the blessing of the Lord comes pouring down so are you ready to praise the name of the Lord come on are you ready faith band are you ready come on let's praise the name of Jesus
Come on, somebody give him praise wherever you are. Come on, lift him up. Give him your highest praise this morning. I, I, you can do better than that wherever you are, whatever venue you're in this morning, wherever you're watching at home. I want you to give him the highest praise right now. Come on, lift up both those hands to Jesus. Give him glory because he's your God. Give him glory because he knows your name. Give him glory because he's hands upon your household. Wherever you're watching, don't let the chairs shout out in your place. Don't let the rocks cry out in your place. Don't let the person next to you shout louder. Today, you've got to decide. I believe you, Jesus. I believe that you never change. I believe that your hands upon my life. I believe I'm going to the next level this morning. I believe you're taking me to that next position. I believe the testimony is coming through this morning in Jesus' name. Woo! Come on, shout one more time. We believe you. We believe you. We believe you are the great I am. Rejoice. 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 Again, I say rejoice. 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 Come on, let the spirit of praise come upon somebody today. Rejoice. Rejoice. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> He's not finished. I decree unto you even today. God's not finished with you. God's not done with your life. God's hand has not moved from your life. His hand is still steadily upon you and your family. His hand is upon your household. And the rest of this year is going to be the greatest part of this year in Jesus' name. Receive that for yourself this morning. Receive it for your family this morning. That is not over for you. We're not slowing down. We're not decreasing. We're not giving up. We're not growing weary. I feel even in my own heart today, wherever you're watching, wherever you're in this place, something needs to turn on the inside of you. I tell you something shifting in my heart, even personally right now now this rest of this year is going to be the best of this year in Jesus name receive it with both of your hands wherever you are receive it for your family today in Jesus name I tell you the testimonies are coming forth in Jesus name shout amen wherever you are I don't want you to be seated just yet because something is changing I'm telling you something whatever venue you're in right now don't be seated stay in this atmosphere because something is turning Something is shifting. Something is changing for the children of God. We are moving forward. God has not called us to stand still. God has not called us to stagnate. God has not called us to give up. God has filled us with His Holy Spirit to be effective in this hour because there is power on the inside of every single child of God. I decree in the name of Jesus, greater things are yet to come for you and your family in the name of Jesus. You know, we welcome every single one of you that's watching today, however you're connecting. We welcome every person that's in this venue today and wherever you are across this beautiful facility. But I want you to know something that you're not hearing my voice by chance this morning. You're not hearing my, my voice by mistake or you just happen to flick onto channel 341 or you just happen to jump onto the Facebook stream. No, God has a plan for your life, sir. God has a plan for your life, ma'am, if you're in this venue. God has a plan for your life. And it's time to take God seriously in this hour. It's time for us to get violent in our faith, to be people who believe God, people who believe that which His Word says. It's time to take Him at His Word. We cannot afford in this hour to be lukewarm. We cannot afford in this hour to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. No, we must be serving God wholeheartedly in this hour because understand something, if you are not violent in your faith, if you are not fully persuaded in your faith, the devil will violate you in this hour. The devil will make your life a tragedy in this hour. Because understand something, just as God has a plan for your life, so does the enemy have a plan for your life. The Bible says the thief cometh to kill, to steal and to destroy. The devil's plan for every child of God's life, every single person on this earth, he has a plan for their life to kill to kill them, to steal from them, to eventually destroy them. But I've got good news for you that just as the enemy has a plan for your life to destroy you, God has a plan for your life to lift you high above, to lift you high above His head. The Bible says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, not just above the enemy, but far above. He can't even get to where you're at. But there's some of you that are listening to me today. I can feel it pulling in my heart. There's some of you that are in this place today. I can feel it in my spirit that you know your life is not right with Jesus, that you know you're not serving Him in the capacity that you should be serving Him, that you know that there's still a particular area of your life that you haven't taken care of, that you haven't given to Him, you've been trying to do it on your own. 
There's some of you here that you did call upon his name. You were saved. Everything that's been happening around you has caused you to fall by the wayside. Jesus today by his spirit is calling you near. Jesus never gives up on you. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, not might be saved. How? How? You believe it in your heart and you confess it with your mouth and you will be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord. Right now, I want every eye closed, wherever you're watching, wherever you are in this place, I want you to close your eyes and every believer that's Holy Ghost filled, I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Because even as we go into this salvation call, I'm seeing that even people are going to be clenched out of the claws of the devil and going to be transferred into the kingdom of light this morning. Because too long have you been harassed by the devil. Today is your day, child of God. Today is your day, sir. Today is your day, ma'am. Today is your day, young adult. Today is your day, youth, to give Jesus your life to stop allowing the devil to harass you. Today is your day to step out of the darkness and to step into his wonderful life. But you see, we've been given this thing, every eye closed, this thing called a free will. You must make up your mind who it is that you will serve in this hour. I've made up my mind for me, for my wife, for my family, that as for us, we're gonna serve the Lord all the days of our life. But today is your day to make up your mind. Whom shall you serve? Those of you, I can feel that there's a conviction in your heart because you know, I need to pray this prayer today. I need to give my life to Jesus because I've been trying to do it on my own. Jesus, I need you. And I can hear it in my heart. There's some of you today and he's pulling you to himself. He's drawing you near. But will you freely call upon his name? For all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If that's you today on Facebook, on YouTube, on DSTV, or if you're in this place and that's you today and you're saying, I need to call upon the name of the Lord today. I need to give my life to Jesus today. I need to make certain today that I'm saved. On the count of three, I want you to put up your hand, even at home in the comment section on Facebook, put up your emoji hand in the comment section if that's you. One, two, three, lift up your hand. If you need to pray this prayer today, I wanna pray with you. Lift up your right hand high, put it above your head. No eye looking around, lift up your hand. Be bold in every venue, lift up your hand. If you know today, We see those hands. God bless you. Every hand, every bold person today. You know that you need to make your life right with Jesus today. We see those hands at home. On Facebook, all those emoji hands that are going up right now because there's something on the inside of you that's turning. Holy Spirit is drawing you to Jesus. And so what I want to do now is I want to lead you in the short prayer to give your life to Jesus. Bible says, I already quoted, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and you shall be saved. So right where you are, if you want to pray that prayer with me this morning, I want you to say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I've sinned against you. But today, I repent of all of my sin. Today, I turn away and I turn to you. Jesus, come into my heart. Where I was once weak, make me strong. Wash me now, Jesus. Cleanse me now. Fill me now. In Jesus' name. Today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. Behold, all things have been made new in Jesus name and I want you to shout amen because the devil just lost his hold on you and every other child of God you better clap your hands and jump up and down because the Bible says that the whole of heaven is rejoicing every angel is shouting right now every angel's getting excited because this is the greatest sign greatest wonder greatest miracle is salvation you just transferred out of defeat into perpetual victory in the name of Jesus You just transferred out of darkness into his wonderful light today in the name of Jesus. One more time, let God's children shout amen. Amen. You may take your seat. We're going to get into the message now. Every single one of you at home that prayed that prayer today, I want you to connect with us. Send us an email. Write in the comment section, I'm saved so all of our ambassadors can connect with you. Because something's turning, something's changing. For the children of God, it's not over. Say that with me, it's not over. Greater things are ahead in Jesus' name. Quickly, if you are in this place and you want an envelope this morning to sow a seed, the ushers are at your disposal and they will come to you and give you a seed this morning. But as I minister this word to you, I want you to open up your heart to receive from the Lord. Because as the word of the Lord comes to you, I believe today by the Holy Spirit an instruction is going to come to your heart today. 
and you determine whether you respond to his voice. And I want you to know something. When you meet God's word with obedience, you transfer into abundance. Abundance is attracted by obedience in Jesus' name. I even feel right now that someone's story is changing today. Someone's story is shifting today. Something is changing today. I can hear it in my heart. There's some of you that are in this place and you're watching me at home. I decree today your story is changing. You haven't been seeing it today. Your story is changing in Jesus' name. His word shall produce in the name of Jesus. What I want you to do quickly now is I want you to close your eyes and I want you to lift both your hands and then we're going to get into it this morning. But even now, Lord, I thank you that as the seed of your word goes into the soil of every heart of every child of God right now, wherever they're watching, wherever they're participating. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that a great bountiful harvest of testimony is coming forth, that they shall possess perpetual testimonies in the name of Jesus. We even decree right now by faith that all harassment of the devil upon your life ends today in Jesus' name. Everything that's been rooted in your heart that's not from God, today is its day to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. And even now as these people receive your word, Lord Jesus, I thank you that their story is changing and today they're stepping into destiny in the name of Jesus. I decree the struggle is over. I decree that the remainder of 2021 shall be bountiful, shall be fruitful, shall be the best next couple of months they've ever experienced in the name of Jesus. And God's children shout amen because they receive it. Come on, you can do better than that. Shout amen because you believe, you believe it, you mean it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job chapter 22 and verse 29. This is where I want to start this morning. The Bible says, when men are cast down, what does it go on to say so powerfully? It says, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say. Somebody say, say. Come on, declare, say. Then thou shalt say say there is a lifting up I see God saying to you today say unto yourself that there is a lifting up in Jesus name I'm here to remind somebody that everything that you might be seeing around you in the circumstances that are around you the situations the conflict everything around you is still subject to what God has already said what you might be seeing now is subject to what God has already said his word is your reality. His word is your destiny. His word is your portion. When everybody else is decreasing, when everybody else is being cast down, then thou shalt say there is a lifting up. You see, everybody else can be decreasing in the world, but the children of God's portion is for them to say that there is a lifting up. You gotta say that today, say that there is a lifting up. You see, there's power in your words. Even when everything around you doesn't make sense, even when everything you might be seeing is contradicting what God has already said, what God has said is above everything that you might be seeing. Today, you've got to say unto your circumstances that when men are cast down, I shall say there is a lifting up because God has said it. I believe it and that settles it. We must get into the place where this word is in your heart, where this word is everything to you. It doesn't matter what anybody else has to say. It doesn't matter what everybody else might be seen. I shall say there is a lifting up. I decree in the name of Jesus that from today, you shall experience a lifting up as you say it in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 3 and verses 10. Say to the righteous, it shall be well for them, for they shall eat the fruit of their deeds. Say to the righteous, You've got to speak it today. You've got to confess it today. You've got to declare it today, even when everything else around you is contrary. Because what God has said is high above everything that you might be seeing. What you might be seeing today is subject to what God has already said. You see, this is why as children of God, we must fill our hearts with His Word. We must fill our spirit with His Word. We must fill ourselves because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what fills you is what will come out of you. If you are not filled with His Word, something else will come out of you. See, what is the abundance of your heart today? If fear, if fake news is the abundance of your heart, that's what's going to leave your lips. And what you say, you are positioned to see. 
See, many of you have been experiencing certain things in these circumstances right now. Your current reality is a product of the words that you have spoken in the past. And if you want to change today what you've been seeing, it's time to change what you've been saying. It's time to allow our lips to His word. It's time to say unto the righteous, it is well. You ask me throughout the week how I'm doing. I say it is well. It is well. Say unto the righteous. Because it's what you say that positions you to see it. I want you to write this down in your notes quickly. I have a couple seconds left. Confession positions me for possession. Confession positions me for possession. Mark 11 verse 23. I hope that you have your seed ready because I'm feeling that even now the Holy Spirit is speaking to people in this place and you at home. And he's given you an instruction. Confession positions you for possession. Mark 11, 23, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he what? He says will be done. Not might be done, will be done. He will have whatever he says. You will have what you say. I remember Brother Copeland said something so powerful. God won't give you what you want. God will give you what you say. You need to say what God says so that you can see what He has already said. Glory to God. I see someone's story is changing today. I see someone's circumstance is changing today. I see someone's reality is shifting today. I see someone's reality is changing in Jesus' name. It's time to say what God has already said. One of my favorite preachers, Bishop David Oyodepo, if it's too big for your mouth, it's too big for your hand. It's time to say what God says and He will put it in your hand. Can you say amen? I want you to stand with me quickly. Get your envelopes ready. As you prepared your seat today, I want to give you the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. Every venue, wherever you are right now, I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to hold your seat in your hand. It's now, it's to meet His word with your obedience. You see, when I receive the word of God into my heart, when I believe the Word of God with my heart, as I meditate upon the Word of God with everything that I have, and as I confess His Word with my mouth, and I act upon it, it is sure results that come forth. You can secure results in your life by believing God's Word and acting upon it and declaring it. Say declare. This morning we have the opportunity to act upon the Word of God in the form of sowing a seed today. Today is your day to sow your seed into the kingdom of heaven. But I want to encourage you, do not dig up in doubt what you are sowing in faith today. Do not dig it out in doubt by a contrary confession. As you sow today, confess the word of God over that seed. Thank you, Jesus, that I shall see a bountiful harvest. Thank you that today I'm positioned to not just be blessed myself, but to bless others in Jesus' name. Thank you that as I sow today, my reality is changing in Jesus' name. Something's turning this morning in the name of Jesus. Something's changing testimonies are coming forth I tell you get ready hold your seat above your head as as high as you can if you're in this place and if you're at home and you're giving on your phone there's multiple ways you can sow today the details are on your screen be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit don't listen to man listen to God quickly hold it above your head right now and I want to pray for you father even now in the name of Jesus I thank you for every son and every daughter that's sowing seed today and today I thank you that they're going to align their lips with your word and I thank you that today as they speak, they shall see. As they say, they shall see it come to pass in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that as they meet your word with obedience, abundance is attracted to their lives. I thank you that today marks their day that they're positioned for the greatest testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ, today we bless you. Today we give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want every child of God to shout amen because you believe God. Shout amen because something's happening. Shout amen because you're gonna see it come to pass in Jesus' name. Right now, all of you that are watching online, follow the details on the screen of how you can give on Facebook, hashtag donate. Or you can go to myfaith.tv, scroll there to the top, hit give. All oh, there's details on the screen. We're going to go into a time of worship now. And I want you to get ready because today I see you going to your next level in the name of Jesus. Say amen one last time. Amen and amen. Let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You unravel me with a melody and you surround me. Yeah. 
child of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. The cross is evidence. I'm no longer a slave to fear. The faith arise to me. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am who you say I am. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am, I am, I am a child of God. Who you say I am, Lord, I'm no longer. Heavenly places, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm seated with Christ in the presence of my enemies. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I am the head and not the tail. I believe in. Tail, I believe it. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm seated with Christ in the presence of my enemies. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm seated with Christ in the presence of my enemies. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm seated with Christ in the presence of my enemies. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm seated with Christ in the presence of my enemies. I'm seated with Heavenly places, I'm seated with Christ. In the presence of my enemies, I'm seated with Christ. In heavenly places, I'm seated with Christ. In the presence of my enemies, I'm seated with Christ. Difficulties. 
I'm seated with Christ in the presence of any circumstance. I'm seated with Christ in the presence of my enemies. I'm seated with Christ. Oh, in the presence of the storm, I'm seated with Christ in the presence of all evil. I'm seated with Christ. There may be sickness around me. I'm seated with Christ. There may be poverty everywhere else, but I'm seated with Christ. There may be sickness and diseases. I'm seated with Christ. Nothing can touch me here. Nothing can touch me here. Oh, I'm seated with Christ. In heaven. You gotta let that be your reality this morning, church. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, we're right here at the table. Oh, right here at the table. Right here. The table. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Come on, let's decree this. This is how I fight my battles. Raise your voices. This is how I fight my battles. Sekaraba seketere de resata. All ye people, lift up your voices. Decree it. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my battles.
This is how I fight my battles. Come on, declare war. This is how I fight my battles. Against battle. poverty and lack, sickness and this disease. Is this is how I fight my battles. The violent this take it by force. Take it, receive it. This is how I fight Appropriate my battles. Appropriate it now. Sikaraba, sikaraba. we thank you for your presence Holy Spirit you are so welcome I pray that you would manifest the fullness of your power and of your glory not only in this place but across the airwaves how far and wide this broadcast might even go right now I thank you for divine encounters even right now people are having encounters with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're encountering His power. You're encountering His glory. And the Lord is lifting you up. I see He is lifting you up. Indeed, there will be suddenly moments in this month of September. This month of September will go down in history as a significant month. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that even in this month, you will find yourself being catapulted into your destiny as a result of a significant suddenly moment in time. And there are some of you even today that before the end of this broadcast, before the end of this meeting, your suddenly moment would have already come to pass. Some of you do not even have to wait until the end of the month. According to your faith, let it be done unto you. If you believe that and if you receive that suddenly moment and you declare that September will be a significant life, a time in your life, let your shout and amen be the loudest in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. You can have your seat for a moment. I want us to stay in this atmosphere. There is an atmosphere of warfare as we come against, as we said, sickness and disease, poverty and lack, because that is not your portion, child of God. 
that is not your portion. If you're joining us right there on Facebook, I want you to say, poverty and lack is not my portion. Or you can make it simple and say that the blessing of God is my portion in Jesus' name. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open it up to Proverbs 18. But I want to encourage you to make some notes today. I'm going to be sharing multiple scriptures. I'm going to be teaching from the word of the Lord today so that it might edify the body of Christ, that it might equip the body of Christ so that you will have an understanding, a revelation that words have power. Depending on which scientific journal you would read or cite, they estimate that the average individual speaks about 7,000 to 20,000 words. Now, there are extreme cases of individuals using maybe more than 30,000, some even say 60,000. And then there are other cases and other situations where people hardly speak at all. But Proverbs 18 from verse 20 says that a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. Not the fruit in his mouth, but the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Again, I say unto you that words have power. In the comment section on the Facebook Live right now, I want you to say this out loud. Words have power. You see, the words that we use not only affects the quality of our life now, it also determines our destiny. Someone say destiny. The words that you speak today not only affects your quality of life now, it also impacts and determines your destiny. In James chapter 3, in verse 4, in the New King James, it says, Look also at the ships. Although they are so large and are driven, they are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. If you're making notes, I want you to write this headline. Jesus calms the storm with his words. In Matthew chapter 8, the, the disciples are right there in the middle of a terrible, fierce storm. The disciples spoke death into the situation. Jesus, on the other hand, is fast asleep. The disciples wake Jesus up. You can also read this in the Gospel of Mark where they say, Jesus, are you not concerned that we are about to perish? And so it is that Jesus looks upon those words that they had spoken into the atmosphere. They had created, even unintentionally, an atmosphere of unbelief an atmosphere of death, an atmosphere that is not conducive for signs, wonders, and miracles. You see, instead of speaking the language of faith, they spoke the language of doubt, of unbelief, the language of death. But then Jesus rebukes them first and foremost. O oh, ye people of little faith. And then Jesus proceeds to rebuke Rebuke the winds and the waves by simply saying, peace be still. And then immediately there was a great calm upon the Sea of Galilee. You see what happened in that moment is that when Jesus rebuked the storm, it was the manifestation of the power of the tongue. Words have power. The earth I would even say the universe is subject. It is subject to the power of God that is in you and released through you when you speak. You see, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. And so God wants us to speak 
We are simply supposed to speak the word, the language of faith. For everything in the universe is subject to the power of God within us. And then it is released through us when we speak. When Jesus calmed the storm, the disciples looked at one another and said, What kind of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey his voice? What kind of man is this? He is not ordinary. He is not average. He is, by very definition, supernatural. He is above the natural. And so it is that we have access to the supernatural power of God. You do not only have access to it, but you by faith become a carrier of the supernatural power of God. The earth is subject to the power that you are a possessor of in Jesus' name. I want you to say this in the comment section. I am a possessor. I am a possessor in Jesus' name. You see, in light of James chapter 3, the fierce winds might drive the ship, but our tongue determines our destination. Let me say this again. The fierce winds might drive the ship, but it is our tongue that determines our destination. Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Another translation says, whatsoever you permit, whatsoever you tolerate, whatsoever you condone. And this is why I say unto you again, there needs to rise up on the inside of you a holy discontent towards mediocrity, towards sickness, disease, poverty, and lack. For that is not your portion in Christ Jesus. If you're making your notes, you can write this down. Never speak death. You see, while I would never ever encourage anyone to be silent, if you cannot speak life, rather than be silent. In Exodus 14 verse 10, it says, When Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked up, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And the Israelites were exceedingly frightened, and they cried out to the Lord. This was not a cry that was like a battle cry, a cry of faith. This was a cry of unbelief. This was a cry of hopelessness. This was a cry of defeat. But then in verse 13 and 14, Moses turned to the people and said, the Lord will fight for you. You only have to be silent. In Numbers 13, 31, the spies who went out to scout out the promised land, the promised land, the land that was promised, it was supposed to be their inheritance. Now they are looking at the promised land. And 10 of them come with this report. They said, we are not able to go up against the people of Canaan, for they are stronger than we are. Verse 33, they said, there we saw the Nephilim, the giants, the sons of, of Anak, who come from the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were also in their sight. But then I love verse 30, Numbers 13 and verse 30. Caleb quieted the people before Moses. Faith rose up on the inside of him. He quieted the people. He said, silence. And then he said, let us go up at once, right here, right now. You see, faith is now. Why delay? Why say tomorrow? Why say, hey, I just missed it by a day? Faith is now. And so he said, let us go up at once. Let us not delay, for we are able to possess it 
we are able to conquer it. And so I pray that every single one of you who have heard the voice of the enemy, even the agents of the devil in this hour, the naysayers who have said it is impossible. Jesus was the one who said, if thou canst believe all things are possible to the one who believes. I pray right now that faith will arise on the inside. A now faith will shoot up on the inside of you that you will say I will be a possessor not tomorrow I didn't miss it by a day or a month I will take it now and I am able to conquer it in Jesus name if you receive that and believe that let your shout be the loudest in Jesus name if you're making notes point number B is to speak the language of death point A is to never speak death. But here's the flip side. Speak the language of faith. In Mark chapter 5, we read about the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Verse 27 and 28, it says, When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Verse 28. Why did she do this? Because it says, Because she thought... In the Amplified Version of the Bible, it says she kept saying, If I just touch his clothes, I know I will be healed. You see, here we find an example of someone who did not just think faith. She spoke faith. And so I say unto you, now is not the hour to let your faith be bottled Speak, say something, speak the language of faith. I need someone right now to join me even right now as we look upon the circumstances of our lives and we say to the devil, hands off devil. Take your hands off my health. Take your hands off my marriage. Take your hands off my children. Take your hands off my home. Take your hands off my business. Take your hands off my finances. Hands off devil. Speak. Say something. Do not let your faith, your voice be bottled up. Let the devil know that you are not trembling in fear. Let faith arise in the name of Jesus. I love these two scriptures, some of my favorites. Romans 10 verse 8. I hope you're making these notes so you can research it even some more, meditate upon these scriptures. I'm telling you, it will change your life. Let the Word of God come and dwell on the inside of you. So that when you ever find yourself in a pressure situation, when the devil squeezes you, when the devil comes at you, you can respond, it is written. Romans 10, 8 says, the word is near you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. 2 Corinthians 4, 13 says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, we all have received According to Romans 12 and verse 3, the same measure of faith. According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. You, say you, you, you see, you cannot say I believe. You cannot say I'm a believer, but be silent. A believer is marked by their voice and language of faith. This woman with the issue of blood. In fact, she didn't just think faith. She also didn't just speak faith. She acted upon her faith. I love what James 2 verse 22 says. Listen to this. It says, faith is made complete. Someone say complete. Faith is made complete by our action. It was only when she actually engaged her faith. It was only at that moment when she reached out in faith, touched the hem of his garment, that she was made whole. 
She thought faith. She spoke faith. But now she was acting upon her faith. And then Jesus said to her, Woman, your faith, not Jesus' faith, your faith has made you whole. To others, Jesus said in the Gospels, According to your faith, let it be done unto you. And so again, I say, let faith arise. Let a voice come forth. I hear the language of faith. Receive it even right now, an increase of faith. A new level of faith. In the name of Jesus. An impartation of faith. A dimension where nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. For all things are possible to the one who believes. Are there any believers in the house? Are there any believers watching today? According to your faith, let it be done unto you. I want you just for a moment to imagine in your mind's eye that which you're believing the Lord for. And we're going to join our faith together. The Bible says that when two or more agree on anything on earth, it shall be done unto them. The Bible also says you shall decree a thing and it will be established. But also some of you might have made what I refer to as an unholy vow. Words such as I will never amount to anything. I will never be able to do this. I will never be happy. I will never find a spouse. I will never be able to afford a home. I will never be able to own my own vehicle. Words have power. And so I want you to say, if it is that you have made such unholy vows, such ungodly, such unbiblical vows, I want you right there where you are to say, Lord Jesus, I renounce every idle word. Every unholy vow is dismantled, nullified now in Jesus' name. I believe that you are who you say you are. I believe that what your word says I can have, I will have. That what your word says, I can do, I will do. And then it is that you are believing the Lord for Him to come through for you. There is an anointing, there is a sound, there is a spirit of breakthrough in the atmosphere. When two or more agree on anything on earth, it shall be done unto them. And so I join with your faith in the Spirit. Father, we declare that all things are possible when we believe. We declare that we believe. We take you at your word, for your word is the truth. It is yes and amen. We declare today that we become possessors of every promise, every promise that you have made, that the covenant promises of God will be made manifest in the life of every believer who continues to walk in holiness and purity and in covenant with God. I decree and declare over your life, that of your family, that of your business, that of your ministry, nothing missing, nothing lacking. 
nothing broken in Jesus' name. That as you are in covenant with God, you have access to divine provision, to divine protection, and divine promotion in the name of Jesus. That even in this hour where the world says there is a casting down, the Lord says there is a lifting up. I prophesy over your life, divine increase, multiplication, promotion, release in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want us to get ready to partake of the communion elements today, the bread and the cup. But right there where we are, I want us to enter preparing our hearts as we enter through the door of worship. So right there where you are, come on, let's worship Him, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Is in the name of Jesus wonderful. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. All across this facility and in your homes, I want you to stand right now in this atmosphere. Take the elements in your hands. The word has come across very powerfully today. And I see families even right now in your homes and even in this place. That the devil's been lying to you and he's been trying to speak intimidation, shout intimidation. That you will die, that you will not live. That there's no hope, that there's no future for you in this nation or in this world. But we're here to prophesy to you today, even as we partake of this communion, that life and death is even in the power of the tongue. So today we speak life. We prophesy life. You will not die. You will live. You will not die. You will live, child of God. See, the prophet Jeremiah writes and he says, I found your words and I ate them. You see, as you consume God's word, even as we partake of the communion today, the reality of healing, of wholeness, of deliverance, of fullness is yours as a child of God. It's time to speak forth the word of faith. It's time to speak forth the word of God. Come on, even in that scripture, Jeremiah 15 verse 16, it says, Jeremiah said in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of what was going on around him, God, I found your word and I ate it. And your word was to me joy and rejoicing for I am called by your name. Understand that wherever you are watching us from, everyone under the sound of my voice, you are called by the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. That is your God. That is who is on your side. But as we were talking about the power of words today, the degree to which you are willing to fill your mouth with the words of your most high God by the one by whom you are called, that is the degree to which you are going to walk in victory. The word of God is as effective in your mouth, in my mouth, as it is effective in the mouth of Jesus. But what made Jesus so effective? What made Him so effective in proclaiming the Word of God and seeing the fruit thereof? He believed the Word. He was the Word because He was consumed by the Word. Nothing else mattered but what the Father had told Him. And God is calling each and every one of us in this place today, wherever you are watching. How connected, how consumed are you by the word of your Father?
the one by whom you are called. Because He is King and He is Lord. And Jesus told us in Mark 11 verse 22, have the God kind of faith. And listen to this, Galatians 2 verse 20, latter part in the um, Passion Translation, excuse me, it says, my new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that He gave Himself for me. Jesus gave Himself for you so that you can live in perpetual victory. He gave of Himself so that you can speak His Word, live in His reality, live by the victory that He paid for. That's who you are. That's what your new name is. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is yours. He came for you. He came to deliver you. He loves you. And the essence of this new life that we now live, we live because of Him. So no matter what the circumstances may look like, no matter what I'm going through right now, my new life is in Christ Jesus and I choose to speak the word. Today, you're listening to me and your breakthrough, your turnaround is determined by the decision that you make regarding the word of God. Just like the prophet Jeremiah let us say, no matter what's going on around us, God, I found your word and I ate it. I will consume your word and I will live in its victory because Jesus did it all. Jesus did it all. When we take communion right now, we are symbolically saying, we are symbolically consuming Jesus, His very blood, His very body that was broken and bruised for us, laid down as an offering for us. And as we consume it, we will speak forth and prophesy His word over every circumstance in our lives and see the victory in Jesus' name. Jesus name. I want you to take the bread in your hand. As a family, we prophesy life. We prophesy health. And we thank you, Lord God, for this privilege that we have even today. We thank you. We thank you. Just thank him right now in your own words. Thank him in your own words. Thank him in a heavenly tongue. Thank him. Thank him right now. Thank him for his body that was broken so that you can be healed. So that you can live whole. Thank you, Jesus. You paid the price. Today we live in this reality. And as you partake, divine healing. I hear the Lord saying now, divine healing comes into your body. Child, you will not die. You will live in Jesus' name. You can partake. And the cup. The blood that speaks a better word. His blood flows through our veins today. And as you partake of this cup, any impurity in your blood, all cancer, it dies today. Father, we thank you for healing virtue that flows right now. We thank you for your blood. You may partake. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we just thank you so much for your goodness, for your healing, for your fullness, for your victory in Jesus' mighty name. We declare your word over every circumstance. Amen. 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 The devil is not only a liar, a trickster, and a deceiver. He is a defeated foe. Absolutely. So today what you could take from this message is you can access your preferred future. How do you do that? Not by just having dreams, by verbalizing, speaking those dreams out in faith and it shall be your portion in Jesus' name. This is your best year, the best few months it's lying ahead. Your best life is ahead of you because you are called by the most high God. Let that be the confession of your mouth. If you've come through sickness and disease and you are here with breath in your lungs, then you will live for Christ Jesus and the devil would be sorry that he ever tried to touch you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not dismantle this week what has taken place right here and right now. Do not dismantle 
every single word that you have decreed and declared into the heavenly places. From all of us right here from Buffalo City, South Africa, on behalf of Pastors Andre and Jenny, God bless you all. Have a wonderful Sunday. We'll see you again next week. God bless you. Goodbye.